Hi everyone, welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100, the movie collaboration channel that PuckPond007 is proud to be a part of, as am I. Uh, my name's Scott, also known as Professor Cineram. I um, do the Thursday reviews, and as our week starts on Friday, I'm wrapping up the theme week as per usual. Um, I mentioned last week that I was going to be doing two Melanie Griffith uh, movies in a row, despite the fact that neither of this week's nor last week's theme was Melanie Griffith. Um, I did uh, uh, Cecil B. Demented for uh, movies about movie making, and this week's theme is Timely Jones. Those of you who are familiar with the filmographies of those two people, you'll probably know that I'm reviewing Stormy Monday. Uh, and that is a movie that came out in 1988 and was the uh, theatrical uh, feature debut of Mike Figgis, the English uh, director of Leaving Las Vegas. He also directed one of my favorite movies of uh, the last decade, Time Code, which is the ensemble comedy uh, where there's like four shots running simultaneously throughout the uh, whole movie. I did a review of that actually uh, for the collab. It got deleted from this channel, but it's on my personal channel, so I'll include the link if you want to check it out. Um, Tom Lee Jones uh, has uh, been an actor that I've uh, seen a lot of uh, over the years, and this might have been the very first movie that I saw him in. I was aware of a film called Black Moon Rising that he co-starred in with Linda Hamilton during the 80s that probably came out before this film, but I don't uh, know the exact year. I've never actually seen it. I've seen a little bits of it. But basically, Tom Lee Jones is like a car thief, and he steals like this... Uh, new ridiculous looking black concept car and gets chased around by bad guys or something like that. Um, but, uh, but this is the first film of his that I saw. Um, and uh, he, he, Tom Lee Jones is generally known for being a rather sur surly type. He's not the kind of guy that, to suffer fools gladly. He's not really big on the uh, publicity machine in Hollywood. Um, like Harrison Ford, he doesn't really uh, uh, stand for uh, stupidity in uh, interviews and things like that. Uh, so uh, he was a good match, I guess, uh, for uh, The Fugitive. Oh, by the way, I should mention that um, some of the reviews that you've seen already on this channel included uh, both The Fugitive and U.S. Marshals at the beginning of the week by E.J. Uh, and Al. Um, and uh, yesterday, Dino did uh, Cobb, which is a movie that I might have seen, but uh, don't recall exactly. Um, and I think... Uh, um, James did Coal Miner's Daughter, and what did Ray do? Ray did, uh, darn, sorry Ray, I forgot which movie you did, sorry about that. But anyway, they're all up, so uh, you can take a look at them. Um, in this movie, uh, Stormy Monday, Tom Lee Jones uh, plays an American businessman uh, who visits uh, Newcastle, England. Um, Newcastle is actually where Sting is from, and Sting is actually also in this movie as well. Um, but neither of them are the main characters. The main characters are played by Melanie Griffith and Sean Bean. Um, Sean Bean is an Irishman who's um, staying in Newcastle. Um, I've seen this movie several times, and I keep... I, I should basically go back and, and look at the disc in frame advance, because he's staying like at a little cheap hotel at the beginning of the movie, and there's a note on his dresser, which you get a close-up of, but I never bother to read it, so I'm not really sure why he's ended up in Newcastle. But he's doesn't have a lot of money, so he's looking for work, and he ends up getting a job as a cleaning person in Sting's nightclub, which is called the Key Club. Uh, it's a jazz club. Um, as it happens, um, at, at the time that this movie takes place, uh, Newcastle is celebrating something called American Week, in which businesses are have uh, like sort of American-themed decorations and, and specials, discounts, what have you, uh, and there's a, a big sort of jazz band parade marching through um, through the uh, 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 center of the city uh, late in the movie. Um, actually, um, I went on IMDb and looked at some of the comments on this film, and um, someone was asking whether or not this actually ever happens in England. And um, the guy who responded to him says, no, there's no real American week, but there are a lot of pubs that take uh, advantage of the 4th of July, which is the American Independence Day for rum specials. Um, and there's actually a, a shopping center in Manchester which has its own replica of New Orleans, uh, complete with, you know, music and architecture and um, food, I guess, uh, that's all very New Orleans themed, and apparently they do a good job with that. Um, but American Week basically uh, has, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, sort of garish and gaudy stuff happening, uh, like a, a giant Pepsi bottle that's been placed in the middle of a, of a traffic intersection. Uh, it's one of the uh, funny bits in the film. But basically it's a noir, uh, kind of a, um, not really a mystery, but not, not really a thriller, but more of just sort of a dark, moody film. It's all about uh, uh, mood, this film. The cinematography, the music, sir, uh, is, uh, is pretty atmospheric. 
And um, Mike Vegas really hasn't made any other films like this so much, it, it, unless you count Leaving Las Vegas, which is kind of dark, but it's, it's not really similar in tone, I don't think. Um, Tom Lee Jones wants to um, buy up a lot of property uh, in Manchester. Um, because he's a, a shady American businessman who wants to launder money, basically. So he's doing that by, um, or at least trying to do that by buying up uh, property in Newcastle. And he has a lot of, you know, important people on his side. But uh, uh, one of the locations he wants to uh, purchase is uh, the building where Sting's nightclub is located, and he has to get Sting's, you know, approval for that. Um, and Sting doesn't really want to sell. He doesn't think his offer is good enough. Tom Lee Jones sends a couple of goons around to rough him up and make him sign the contract, but fortunately, Sean Bean, who just started working for Sting, overhears these guys in a restaurant talking about how they're going to go over to Sting's club the next day uh, and rough him up and get him to sign the contract. So he warns his boss, and Sting is ready when the guys come along, and that leads to uh, one of the best bits in the movie. The guys um, who have come to, uh, who are working for Tom Lee Jones, are driving a red sports car. I looked uh, on several places online, and I cannot find the make of the sports car, but it's a very important vehicle. It's 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 in the very first shot of the movie, and it's, you know, important to the film itself, uh, in in, uh, in a number of ways. Um, so when he he basically corners these uh, these thugs and goes through their pockets, he finds the keys, and he goes, "Oh, it's a very nice car." He throws the keys to uh, to Sean Bean and says, "Brendan, give this man a pound." So takes a bill out of his pocket and sticks it in, and he says to the thug, you just sold him your car. <laughs> so Sean Bean gets to drive around the red sports car for the rest of the movie. Um, I forgot to mention where Melanie Griffith fits in there. Uh, she's a waitress who's working in a, a, a local restaurant, um, but uh, she has a business relationship of sort with uh, Tom Lee Jones' character. Um, he wants her basically to be around, look nice, and kind of um, flirt, I guess, with some of the um, uh, uh, councilmen and people who he's trying to win the favor of at uh, various events. And she doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. You know, she doesn't like him. Uh, he's he's really shady, and so um, so she's reluctant to participate. But she 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 has to. She's under contract. Um, but she uh, literally runs into Sean Bean's character at one point uh, when she's out shopping for new clothes. And then later, when he comes to the restaurant for a bite to eat, she happens to be the person waiting at his table. So they decide to have a drink later on, and they have a little romance developing, um, and that also comes into play in the storyline. Um, I was, Roger Ebert's review of this movie, I remember reading it years ago when I looked it up again, and um, he, uh, he spends most of the review uh, talking about the sights and sounds of the film rather than the story so much, um, and how all these sort of little moments are important to the film. That the, the the critics often talk about the basics of the storyline, but don't talk about kind of the looks that are exchanged, you know, and the way certain images recur, and uh, and just sort of the mood of the film was established through its its visuals uh, and its sounds, particularly music in this case. Um, Mike Figgis not only wrote the script and directed the film, he also um, composed the score. Um, and uh, he got a really uh, awesome uh, group called the Krakow Jazz Ensemble, <laughs> who do crazy work, basically, to play at Sting's Club. Uh, but when another band fails to uh, make their gig for Timely Jones' engagement, um, the hotel manager says, oh, there's this other Polish band, the Krakow Jazz Ensemble, they could fill in. And so when they play the Star Spangled Banner, they go way, 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 way over the top, and, and that's pretty funny as well. Um, I like Tommy Lee Jones a lot in this movie. Like I said, it's like the first movie I ever saw him in. And I've liked him a lot of uh, other stuff as well, although sometimes he just seems perturbed all the time. But uh, there are a number of movies that I like him in. In this one, he's uh, a bit looser. He's playing more of a bad guy in this one. And there's one shot at the end of the movie where he lights a cigar. He's particularly demonic looking. They light him with a, uh, an overhead light so that his brow, he's got a very prominent brow, creates a shadow over his eyes. He looks, he looks very sinister in that shot. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also the first movie I ever saw Sean Bean in. Um, I like everyone in this movie, um, but uh, Sting is my favorite. I, I think he's, he does a really good job uh, in this film as well. I mean, I like them all. It's, it's a really good movie. I've been a, fa a fan of it for a long time. I actually um, watched this movie. Um, I recorded it late one night when I was a kid. I think it might have been about 14 years old. I saw the listing, and so in the middle of the night, I snuck out into the living room and put a tape in the VCR and set it to record um, because Melanie Griffith is super sexy, and I wanted to see the good, so to speak, and I was kind of disappointed there, but I liked the movie a lot. And the movie has 
things that you notice about it on repeated viewings, which is something that I always really enjoy, like the car. The car itself is, is, is important, and it's in the first shot of the movie, and there's some insignificant little details and just things you sort of pass by in the beginning that actually are significant later on. You don't really understand why they're being shown or why they're important until you see the movie a second and third time, and I always really enjoy films like this. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. This is my review of Stormy Monday. Got a new theme starting tomorrow. I hope you all tune in for that, and subscribe to, uh, subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks a bunch. Bye.